Hey guys, I'm Alex and this is Abdul and we're with Wilson Amplifiers and today we're here to talk to you about why you might want a cellular signal booster system. So Abdul here is probably our chief installer. He goes out and he uh, helps install signal boosters all around the country. He's dealt with all kinds of clients and so he knows his stuff. So I brought him here today to help answer some of the questions that we get asked a lot, um, including things like, how many users can this take? All this sort of stuff. So uh, let's start. Why would somebody need a cellular signal booster for their business? Uh, I think for one, I guess uh, the biggest complaint is their CEOs complain that they don't have cell signal. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the IT department's got to hear about it. So then they come and try to find a solution into improving that. Uh, a lot of customers, they decide to use what's called Wi-Fi calling and most businesses don't want you guys to use that or want to use that because it overloads their system, their infrastructure, so then they seek out uh, a signal booster and I think that's a perfect candidate. Yeah, so a lot of people I think probably deal with bad cell signal and try to just essentially live with it or and they try to say well, why doesn't my carrier do it, they switch carriers, people do a lot of stuff like oh, that yeah. to try to really fix their signal but the reality is sometimes they're just in an area that just has bad signal or they their building prevents the signal from getting inside so you might have seen it like even in airports sometimes you're gonna have horrible cell signal it's, even though it's an airport right it's got all this stuff so it's a matter of those factors and signal boosters can kind of pick up the slack and bring the signal in to where it needs to go. Right. So why don't we talk a little bit about what a signal booster is and how it works and why it works. Okay. So there's basically three parts to a signal booster, right? Correct. So what are those parts? Uh, first part is uh, it deals uh, outside antenna, so you've got two different versions. You can use the directional antenna or you can opt for a omnidirectional antenna. And then you've got your booster in between and then you've followed by the two internal antenna, different choices that you want. You could either go with a dome or, or a panel antenna. And there's a few other varieties. So I believe that basically the outside signal captures the signal Correct. that so, exists. So if you have to have like usable actual, signal. Yeah, a usable signal. Right. It needs to be somewhat functional uh, and then the booster will correct me if I'm wrong amplify it enhance yeah and then the antenna is the point at which it will be right sent into the it'll propagate area. the signal inside of the building inside yeah. of the infrastructure that you're trying to get coverage in right we've also heard people wonder are these legal like can they how do they work basically you just answered the second part but why, are they legal? Like Yes, how, how, absolutely yeah. legal. Um, FCC requirements, I think part 20 talks about um, if you want to purchase one of these boosters, you have to go through an authorized dealer and they do have to be sold as kits. A uh, big question that we always get asked is why can't I just buy the kit or the just the booster alone? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, FCC doesn't allow that. So um, all of our kits that we sell at exactly. Wilson Amplifiers are full kits. Right, you will get the outside antennas, all the cabling or the cabling that you need. Uh, and then your inside antennas. And then obviously if you want to expand after that, we do sell expansion kits where you can purchase those separately. Okay, so they're legal basically. Yep. We have to, we have, do they have to do anything? Like so when you, when you purchase one of these, you install it, you do have to register it with the carrier. So you, there is a number that you need to call. Uh, once you register it, you are good to go. Yeah. So what kind of coverage can a person expect with a signal booster? Like, how does how do they measure that? How does that? So there's different out? versions, different types of boosters, uh, amplifications that we that we sell. So we've got as low as I think 3,500 square feet, and we can go up to 100,000, yeah, maybe bigger. more than that. There's, there's some that I think are what like 1,500. They're very okay. very low powered simple boosters. Possibly. Yeah. But we can go as, uh, like you said, as low as 1,500 square feet, or and we've done up to 200,000 square feet, depending on how many boosters you want to include. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it has to do with power of the booster, right? So, depending on how powerful the booster is and the strength of the, these different components, you're going to get a different maximum coverage. Correct. And that, I should stress, is maximum coverage. Typically, you're only going to get that with an optimized system or and extremely good outside cell signal. Most people are probably going to have what 
mid-tier sell signal, low sell signal. Right. So possibly that, the middle ground. So yeah. the 25,000 square foot system. If somebody's in a rural area, has usable signal, will probably get 8,000 square feet would be ideal. Yeah. So that's something to bear in mind right. when we're talking about and it. And keep in mind that when we do advertise these, we're not saying that one antenna is going to give you 25,000 square feet. That's if you use it to its max capacity. So what I'm trying to say is uh, if you add more additional antennas, uh, four, maybe possibly five antennas on the system, then you're absolutely going to get the, the most out of your system. Okay. So we talked a little bit about measuring cell signal or just signal strength in general. So how would somebody go about doing that? I mean, it's, is that, where do they do that? Or where do they do that? Um, first of all, don't take your signal reading inside. We already know that your cell signal inside is not good. So I would say for the sake of where you want to place the outside antenna and optimize yeah. it, go ahead and take readings from the highest point that you can mount an antenna. And then uh, also take some ground level readings, uh, one on each corner of the building, um, and then on the rooftop levels, same yeah, thing. Remember that the outside antenna is what's capturing the signal. So wherever you put that, you want it to be the most powerful signal you can get. The most effective yeah, signal. Yeah, the most effective. Yep. Um, so let's just get, go through a little bit, a few questions sure. uh, that we get asked a lot. So the first one is how many people can use a cell signal booster at a time? Um, that depends on the what type of system you use, how many antennas, um, if it's a high ceiling, low ceiling environment. Uh, typical office spaces are bunched up with a bunch of cubicle spaces. Um, so you can absolutely get a lot of coverage with that. Um, it's really hard to put a number on it. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it varies depending on the, it varies. the actual power of the system and the strength of the signal, right? Um, what about carriers? Which carriers do these cover? So this does uh, cover all four major carriers, T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. Um, as of now, as you know, T-Mobile and Sprint has merged, so those are technically one, one carrier, so uh, those carriers are covered. And then also sub-carriers such as Cricket, I believe they share towers with AT&T, and then uh, Simple, Simple Mobile, yeah, I the, think they share carriers with T-Mobile as well. So a lot of those kind of sub things you might have bought from, you know, track phone, all these sorts of things, they all share their towers with the main carriers, right? Right. Um, what about um, programming? Does, a, does one of these need to be programmed, set up? This particular model doesn't require much programming at all. As long as you optimize the outside antenna to the towers, um, really no need. Uh, the higher level tier boosters that Wilson offers, um, I would say those would take a little bit more finessing. It requires us to go into the cloud control and start messing with turning on and off certain bands. It just all depends on the on the macro level signals. Yeah, okay. What about um, installation? So can somebody do this on their own? Can somebody, like a guy just go and install one of these boosters or do they need to be professionally installed? What would you recommend? If this individual can climb a, a ladder can drill some holes, I think uh, possible, yes, absolutely, that they can, they can install it. Um, it doesn't require any kind of electrical, like, splicing or anything, as long as, I think the only splicing that's required is running a ground cable from the surge protector that's included in the kit. Other than that, everything's just plug and play. Yeah, so essentially what we're trying to, like, basically, I, you tend to do much higher level, like, large installation, right? right? When they're smaller, they don't necessarily require professional installation. Now, if they need to get it installed, okay. who would be able to do it? Uh, Wilson amplifiers. Yeah, we can install things from a lot from a large thing, but you know, if you're doing it for your home or something like that, you might look into getting an electrician or somebody local Correct. to do it. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, I hope that this has helped. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to call us and we can actually make maybe more of these videos if you guys have further concerns. So um, hopefully this has helped and answered some of your more pressing questions and uh, we'll see you guys soon.